Good morning, brothers and sisters, and praise the Lord Jesus Christ for y'all today. It's such an honor to be here. It's just such an honor to the people who have already been watching my videos. And these videos are pretty much just to help disciple each other in our recovery through the grace and knowledge of God and His Word. The first video I did was on step one, powerlessness. And this is the second video, and we're going to be a kind of a short video, but this is on unmanageability. And I like to dispel a common belief amongst people in recovery that, and amongst people in the church, that as soon as we admit we are powerless over our dependencies, over our sins, over our lifestyles, over our addictions, over our codependencies, that as we work through the steps, that the unmanageability just immediately goes away. And that's just not true. Uh, what ends up happening in step two, as we will study, and step three, that we get brought to the point where we come to believe that a higher power can restore us to sanity. Now, when we're restored to sanity just means that we start to think in a different direction, that we start to think outside of our own self-sufficiency. Now, in the 12 Steps for Christians, it says that admitting that our lives are unmanageable is difficult to, as acknowledging that we are powerless. We can become more observant of the thoughts and behaviors we still rely upon from our past as a way to try to hide the truth about ourselves today. We need to be totally honest, drop the disguises, and see things as they really are. When we stop finding excuses for our behavior, we have taken the first step toward achieving the humility we need to accept spiritual guidance. It is through this spiritual guidance that we can begin to rebuild ourselves and our lives. Now, as we admit we're powerless, we start to see the unmanageability in our life. The unmanageability God allows in our lives to bring us to repentance. And in leading us to repentance, He's leading us back to Him. Acts 3.19 says, and this is from the Amplified Version because I really like the picture it paints. 19 says, so repent, change your mind and purpose, turn around and return to God, that your sins may be erased, blotted out, wiped clean, that times of refreshing, of recovery from the effects of heat, of reviving with fresh air, may come from the presence of the Lord. See, as in recovery, I have a real hard time both being a soldier, <clears throat> being somebody that was raised up in a very dysfunctional family, and being raised in and out of group homes and foster homes. Uh, I became to be a very self-reliant, self-sufficient individual because I learned early on that if anything that I wanted to happen in my life, I had to do. But the problem with that was I had no power because I was relying on my self-sufficiency. Those survival skills that were developed at a young age to guard against the rejection and the hurt and the pain that I was experiencing have now become hindrances in my life. And I told you that we were going to see unmanageability from a different aspect and it just don't go away like that. In 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12, a lot of us know this story of, of King David and his committing adultery with Bathsheba. Now see, I believe that David was starting to rely on his own self-sufficiency just a little bit at this point. But he was enticed to sleep with a very beautiful woman. Now had he been out at war with his, with his commanders and his troops like he was supposed to be, this wouldn't have happened, but we do know that everything in God's 
kingdom happens for a reason. And it was to teach a lesson, I believe. David's sin with Bathsheba was more than just some adultery that brought about maybe perhaps some some uh, sexual disease or something because in Psalm 38 David cries out about the about the, the pain in his body and cries out about the boils and the, and the sores in his flesh and so we know David had multiple concubines and multiple wives and only God knows what all was going on there but if I look at what's happening in the world today I can only imagine in that sin he ended up feeling so ashamed of what he had done and not because of what he'd done but because of what other people might find out because when Bathsheba became pregnant was when David started really operating in his own self-sufficiency instead of going to God he had tried to get Uriah the Hittite to go back and sleep with his wife he wouldn't do it because that man knew that his place was with his troops so when that little manipulation by David didn't work he ended up having him killed not by his own hand but it was still the blood was on his hands so in a little time God brought Nathan the prophet to David and the prophet laid a story at his at his feet about a situation in Israel at the time which was a type of shadow of what David had done with Bathsheba and Uriah the Hittite and when he was finished telling the story that outraged David so much about this individual that David said that he needed to be put to death then Nathan the prophet looked at him and said this is what the Lord God says that man is you and it immediately brought the understanding that God that no sins were hidden from God in David's eyes now in the last video we talked about David being a man after God's own heart that's because he stayed in repentance a constant state not only of repentance but in knowing that he was God's anointed one and knowing that only God could do what he does even once David would get into a self-sufficiency many times in the Bible he always knew that it was God who was in charge it was always Jehovah it was always the Lord his God who brought about the victories in his life but Nathan God spoke through Nathan and told David that because of that sin he wasn't going to die he had been forgiven of that sin but that sin was going to bring about so much unmanageability in his life if you continue to read in the next couple chapters you see that son against son David's sons against each other David's sons raping their sister uh, sons killing each other uh, trying to they, they tried to come against the kingdom David's kingdom that God had given him and God told him all this was going to happen now his sin brought all this upon all this unmanageability his pain in his heart because his one son wouldn't come home the pain in his heart for his other son that was killed the fact that he was running all over Israel and Judea and outlying areas running for his life from those that wished to kill him now all this unmanageability was brought upon by that one sin even though David had repented it did not go away that unmanageability had to come to fruition and I believe it was to bring David to a deeper point of humility where he would not forget that his total reliance was upon God. You know, we have a saying in AA that, that we do not regret the past nor wish to shut the door on it. And in my additions, I always wanted to, I don't want to confront all that. I don't want to deal with that. I've been saved. I've been bought by the blood I've been washed in the blood I've renounced these things I've pleaded the blood of Christ over them but I don't want to deal with them no more but as a minister of the word of God as a minister of reconciliation as a child of the king 
God keeps me of watching my life, of reflection. And when I see the unmanageability in my life, I start doing step 10. I want to see where I've gone wrong. Not all the time is the unmanageability in my life going to be brought upon by my sin. But it's always going to be brought about by my self-sufficiency. Now when I finally figure out that I'm not humble, that I'm arrogant, and that I have to repent and change my mind so that my sins may be erased and that times of refreshing would come, I have to see what what's going on. And it takes that unmanageability for me to come to that point of repentance. Now I'd just like to say and encourage each and every one of y'all especially y'all in recovery. I know your lives are unmanageable. And I know even those that have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior that the chaos hasn't just gone away. All that fruit, all the things that we've done in our past has to come to fruition. Now, our God does give us mercy and grace. And like the Apostle Paul said, it's seven, Romans 7, 18 through 20. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. In other words, in order to do good is in my mind and I want to. But how to perform that good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil that I will not do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that lives in me. And, and getting to the closing of this, Apostle Paul's life at that time was unmanageable. You can see through reading the scripture. He was fighting with a thorn in the flesh constantly. And Jesus and Paul even realized that that thorn in the flesh was given to him to keep him humble. Sometimes our unmanageability that continues along in our life from our past sins is designed to keep us humble. That we may continue to seek God. That we may continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That we may continue to seek the Lord our God and to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That is what has to happen for us to grow. God's mercy and grace is going to be an immediate situation. And he's going to deliver them. But for others of us that does not come to that immediate deliverance. We walk through all this that we may learn how to trust in Jesus Christ just as Apostle Paul did. That the faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ who was crucified was buried and resurrected from the dead. That trust in Him, even though our lives are completely unmanageable, can give us that peace that surpasses understanding. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. You will have unmanageability. You will have chaos. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. As long as we rely on our self-sufficiency, our life will become, be unmanageable. As we learn to trust and walk in the grace and the blood of Jesus Christ, the one and only true higher power, we will see the unmanageability for what it is. We will do the steps, we will do our inventories, and we will confess these sins before God and other human beings. That way they lose their power over us and that way we may experience peace. So until next time, brothers and sisters, may the fullness of God in Christ in every area of your life cover you. May the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, fill you. We are just leaking vessels. We constantly need to be refilled with the power of God.